Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the NECC Rainbow Six Siege Champions Division Playday Number One. My name is Binks, and I'm joined here by Corbeck. Hey, Binks, happy to be here. Excited to watch some uh, collegiate R6 action. I sure is. I, I surely am as well. And we have two great teams lined up for everyone tonight. So first, we're going to have Queen's University as well as UTD Green. So that's Queen's University, Ontario and University of Texas at Dallas. Indeed. Well, there's Queen's University's lineup. Spongebob, Munchie, Sealgram, Zookie, and Steven2333 right there rounding it out. A experienced team, uh, a bunch of seniors and juniors here on the deck. So uh, hopefully some, uh, some veteran talent there that can help them succeed this season. But let's take a look at UTD Green if you want to walk us through that, Banks. Well, if we're looking over at UTD Green, we have To Kill a Friend, Texthorn, Mark, Trish and failure. So all of these players, once again, that same sort of mentality of they're an experienced team. You can see that all these players are moving towards their later years with them having junior seniors and they have no freshmen. So all these players have had gone through at least one year of their semester or university. And I think that it brings a lot of maturity in both these teams, especially considering this is champions Corbett. So we're expecting to see a lot more coming out from these teams. Yeah, this should definitely be some uh, more high-level gameplay, which is, you know, obviously going to give us more to talk about and more for you to enjoy on your screens at home. Uh, do we have a confirmation for tonight's map pool here that we can pull up and take a quick look at, or are we just we uh, walking our do, way Corbeck. through? We surely do, Corbeck. We can look at there every single one of them, starting off with our Cafe Dostoevsky ban from Queens. No surprise there. It's more of like a very played-out map, and we can move over to Theme Park, which is more of the newer map. So you have played out versus more newer and uncomfortable. So you can see those both those bands going right off the bat. Moving on to Border and Skyscraper, same exact deal. Newer, you don't want to deal with more of a shifting meta when you don't understand how your team plays. And now we can move into our first pick with Queens taking Villa, a very comfortable map with a meta that seems to shift with every single season. Yeah, and then rounding it out there with the clubhouse and the Oregon pick to wrap it up. Again, a very comfort-centric set of picks here for the map, right? These these are not anything that is going to particularly uh, break the bank here. It's a good starting place, too, for the first match of the season. Kind of uh, get the team in an actual match, get them playing together in a competitive lineup, and uh, get them rocking. And I think it's, a, I think it's a, a bit of a, I guess some people would call it a boring map pool, but I think it is a sensible map pool for what we're looking at here yes especially on our first play day you'd want to set the tone but you don't want to go out of your comfort zone you want to stick where you know you can play the right angles and not get caught off guard from some wacky strategy comfort zone is exactly where you want to be and that's why this map selection makes perfect sense to me same here. And yeah, I, I think it'll be very interesting too to just see how these more experienced teams do tackle uh, these maps. But hopefully we'll be hopping into our game soon. We can get a look at the bands and we can get a look at what they will be running there on Villa. A bit of a defender-sided map in the main here, Banks. So that's what we're going to be starting off with. We'll have to be really, I think, making a, making some considerations and, and see if that gives one of these teams a bit of an early advantage here at the starting gate. It will be very interesting to see how we could shift up these maps. I, I'm, I think we can expect to see a Thatcher ban, even with all those EMP throwables being introduced. It, it's just a matter of Thatcher does it better, and it's still a very comfortable pick, especially when we go to somewhere like Villa. Villa, I can... ...any longer... ...we'll have the first attacking ban, and we will be right off. Any predictions? I mean, I don't think we really have enough to judge these two teams on just yet, so I'm hesitant to kind of throw out predictions early on at the start. I mean, some things have changed in the game since last season. Obviously, suppressors back in the mix now is a viable weapon attachment. You mentioned the throwable EMP gadgets as well. These are things that people are going to have to take into consideration in their gameplay uh, and kind of see how they're going to have an impact here. And I think those sort of changes are probably going to be one of the most interesting aspects of this game today. Um, especially the introduction of suppressors, right, is a more common tool. Operators like Nook, their value increases dramatically. 
when using a suppressor and that might make them much more dangerous depending on a team if, is if a team is willing to run them uh getting rid of the jaggle getting rid of the thatcher i think those are both pretty sensible attacker bands but again that does leave some really powerful operators such as finca uh on the board here very good point but we can move towards the defensive end Cade will be the first to go from queens banning it very sensible if you're getting rid of that thatcher you might as well make sure that Cade is gone and off the board otherwise you're going to be dealing with that headache every single attacking round of not knowing if you'll be able to clear a wall properly next to go is valkyrie another very sensible band corbeck all for the reason that that's such a powerful information tool to know exactly where the attackers are coming from yeah, it's interesting to see the Kaid get taken out uh, right now. Uh, this is kind of a natural ban that often follows on from that Thatcher ban, and teams will often find themselves in a bit of a difficult position if they don't get rid of the Kaid. <sighs> Excuse me. Let's... Because those EMP grenades are, you know, so effective at removing Electro Claws, without them, whew, the Electro Claws, they become a little bit harder yeah, to, to deal with. It almost forces you into a position of taking a Maverick. Now, it doesn't look like our attackers have started with a Maverick in the tank. Interestingly enough, they are bringing along the Sniper, Kali, to the party, which is, uh, which is an interesting form of util destruction, I must say. I actually quite like it on the side of Queen's University, all for the fact that look at the operators that are being selected by UTD Green. These are the type of gadgets that you're going to be putting on the reinforcements, mute jammers that will be close to reinforcements trying to do double duty. So as soon as Kali shoots to get those off the wall, she's doing so much damage that doesn't even have to worry. Everything is cleared and every single player on the team can just let it go. And since it's study Corbeck, those are the long angles that once they're opened up, especially that soft wall, means that that long line of sight, just like that, the pressure within the first 10 seconds of the round is already on for UTD Green. Yeah, and it's a bit of an early start to the violence here. Trish firing at kind of an interesting angle there with the MP5K. I wasn't exactly sure what they were trying to delay here. Texhorn playing that traditional red stair sort of positioning here as well. Obviously, Failure Hero out on the roam there with that Mozzie. Meanwhile, here comes the pressure from Queens as they'll start their entry into the master bedroom and slowly begin to eat up territory with this drone work. Interesting, too, that they're bringing an Ash along to the party, an operator that doesn't get played an awful lot anymore compared to where she used to be in the meta but it does appear that failure is well aware of what they're doing here and does have that police planted c4 ready to go a good clear so far from queens but with us reaching that two minute mark that's two minutes remaining for them to take control of the roam as well as sight with the plant now they can go for the frags as they are going to now come against this biggest challenge this biggest hill for them to to conquer which is the red stairs and red hallway because of how much of a power position it is Texcorn still has two of his my magnets waiting and ready to be thrown to catch any sort of utility so the moment that he has to peek it's a crossing but look at this beautiful utility and information gathering from queens he's at the ayana they know that 90 is clear so they can now begin to push up but the opening kill will come from mark as well as failure with the c4 refragged by zuki and we're down to a 4v3 with both cali and ash off the board yeah, a little bit of a mistake on the cutoff there from Texhorn. Wasn't quite paying attention where they needed to be, but it's okay because his team is sort of cleaned up on the back end of it. That's where these kills are coming in here fast and furious. A 3v4 situation, not ideal for the attackers, especially considering that they lost their sort of hard breach uh, denial operator right there, or their denial of hard breach denial, I guess is a better way to look at it. Uh, but they still got tools to play with in this kit. You've still got the Gemini. You do still have hard breach tools here in your pocket as well, but certainly it's going to be a lot harder to contain the roam and i think we're going to see oh. the initial angle on that oh to kill oh. a fiend there caught looking i don't think he got down very lucky for the jaeger that it didn't go worse but zuki's going to go ahead and get this wall open and start to attack the point yeah pressure is now finally being put onto the objective queens needs to make a move now otherwise sight will be unattainable for this round hence going to utd green meanwhile failure will get their second kill on the grab to seal make that three for failure looking for four cases down stevens at 90 possibly lining it up for them and there it is a four tape from failure to open up this match yeah, that's a good, good, 
good start here from the defensive side. They played it very well. They collapsed on the threats uh, and it dealt with them in a most efficient fashion. It's a, obviously a defender favored map. We didn't mention that at the start of this, but you you know you still got to capitalize. You still got to be part of the discussion here. They're going to go over to Trophy Statuary now. Not a big shift in the lineup, though. That bandit pick coming out here again. So it'd be, I think, Markers who'd be taking that role here. Defenders and that will probably be focused on the attackers. long wall heading over towards Master Bedroom. Just give him a little bit of added protection from that degree. Finally, I think we're seeing a Finca being rotated in the lineup here as well for Queen's Banks, which is uh, probably overdue. I think if Finca is on the board, you're you're definitely missing a trick if you're not using her pretty much constantly. Right. I, I, you have a valiant point there, but the Finca will be switched on over to the Doke B from Munchie. I can see the reasoning behind it. It's two universal operators where you can affect the game from anywhere on the map. Doke B can call from anywhere as well as get the information the cameras once they get a downed phone from the defending side so that could be a, a roamer that gives you access to mossy's cameras i'm interested to see how much of an impact on the round and it could be using the flashes to clear a utility but at the same time that's two sets of flashes which would only clear for perhaps an ace selma breaching charge or an ash breaching round so it's interesting to see where it will come into play but we can't forget to mention the clear roam game that UTD Green has gone for with both Failure as well as the Jaeger of To Kill a F Friend. Fiend? On the roam. Fiend. To Kill fiend. a Fiend. Yes. To Kill a Fiend. Yes. <laughs> Damn fiends. They're all over the place these days. Can't throw a rock without hitting a fiend somewhere. Seal Graham walking right into that one. Lucky to get out of it with their life. The Roni sort of betraying its master right there. Won't do it a second time. Failure immediately has to slam a new one in the clip. The Glock with the stock certainly lacking in information, but not necessarily, or I should say ammunition, but certainly not lacking in killing power. The joke can be brought along again. Another fake out on the Finca, and I just cannot get behind this thing. So I think it is a mistake to not have the healing grenade LMG operator in the lineup here. You're, you're literally making this harder on yourself. For example, situation with IQ right here would be resolved relatively well if you had had a Finca at very low risk to the rest of the team. Yeah, we can look, the Dokubi ring has already now been utilized, meaning that the Finca would still easily have a lot of boost remaining for the rest of the round, but now they'll have to move on a little bit more wounded, but they can still try to make the most of it. With a minute 28 to go, they've cleared Kitchen, but Kitchen won't do them everything that they need. They still have to kill a fiend down in the basement, and they have not been able to find failure. Meanwhile, Corbeck's site is all the way on the second floor. They have a minute 50, and it's quite literally an uphill battle at this point, because they have not noticed failure, giving them the opportunity to swing around and possibly catch these players uncontested. Shooting won't be able to finish off the Nomad of Steven. They'll be led up to a considerable amount of low health, leaving them completely pinched out, but nobody's looking the direction. Failure to find their first till the round rotate off rather unscathed let me reiterate not a single point of damage has been done as they're escaping to kill a fiend finally making their approach but just choosing the right time as everyone's trying to find failure swinging past one to find it munchy with a refrag on the text we know a failure will find their second spraying for the ash will be able to find it trish upstairs will find munchy seal Graham to finally take a failure down to 2v3 and it looks like we might have a fight this round corvex but nope marks wants to make sure there is none of it all left up to Zoki upstairs inside a bedroom, all on their lonesome. Using the cellar reaching charge to also get stuck in the toxic canister. All around the room, lit up to a single point of HP, can't even bolt the shield into sight. Remaining. With 15 seconds to go, three players to find is looking quite unlikely for Zoki. Swinging around will push into the dispersing five gas with five seconds. It is all but lost. And there's Marks to find the final kill on the round in a very dominant one at that. Well, again, Binks, we saw a really punishing Rome game there coming Rip out of ATD Green. That's something that has been consistently an issue over these first two rounds. Failure Hero here on the screen, the one who was kind of putting in the work early on. And I mean, look at how much this delayed the attack. Not even talking about the double kill, right? Uh, just in terms of taking up time, right? You had the down. You have to deal with the down. You have another operator killed. That slows the roll even more. It's just progressively biting chunks out Defender, of the limited resource pool. Uh, that Queens had to really push back right there. So you got to give credit where credit is due. If you're sitting on the side of Queens, though, 
Uh, you got to find a way to get around this, right? You don't have a Jackal to use. That is kind of frustrating, but there are other anti-roam operators. There are other answers here, and you're going to run into that again, right? There's nothing here to disincentivize Failure Hero from adopting the same positioning. I think Failure has also been doing a great job of utilizing drones and stopping that information collection, even if it's not directly on the site itself. You can tell that their position is constantly at a, a in a position to stop information game, but the Ayana being taken should be a very good indicator of how to push things. If you send that Ayana into key positions first, where they can gather information and get shot, it's not optimal for an Ayana to get shot because it takes longer to recharge. But at the end of the day, it's a clear risk detector. It's better that the clone gets shot than the actual player, because that will almost always result in a death. That is very true indeed. And and again, this attacking lineup, I think, leaves something to be desired. I just don't know what Ash is really bringing to these setups. Uh, they haven't gotten a ton of value out of the soft destruction. It's not particularly helping them deal with the roam either. I mean, if it was a gun skill thing, I could sort of see it. But that doesn't seem to have been a kind of key part of their analysis here. Now, the deployment of these sort of temporary barricades, Banks, is quite interesting. Obviously, Munchie is going to eat through them, but every time that they do it's a big sound cue here for markers and probably failure hero who's around as well uh to really put some shots down range and to get some good info and again if they don't shut down this roam game early on specifically if they don't take out the mozzie they're going to be in a dangerous situation indeed nade being used to disperse the barricade and ensure there's not a player lurking upstairs but we can't forget the site is not upstairs it is downstairs so the reason why we have such a big hold upstairs is to stop any vertical control which is definitely one of the kryptonites of this kitchen bomb site munchie's gonna be the first to advance in through trophy looking for this lonesome roam player we'll be able to see the head flick off too soon marks will snag the head of munchie and rotate right back down to site to barricade and live to see another fight leaving the player of queens picking up the pieces meanwhile down below see oh, will be cooked no. out will not even find the intended player but nevertheless there goes zookie or hard breaches oh, off the board leaving up to the gunfights pink coming out not able to find the second player no damage being done from which i can see but we're now down to the final minute no vertical control has or pressure being applied and failure we've learned to say their name multiple times this past round is known for their roam they have to make a move quickly because Seal Graham is pushing with their team right down towards the objective. I mean, they've already surrendered control of verticality here, and they haven't managed to shut down these roamers at all to kill a fiend creeping up the stairs. But it's actually Texhorn who claims the next kill that we spungle bow down. And that leaves everything in the hands of Steven and Seal Graham. That'll make that everything in the hands of Steven here. A 1v4 situation for the Nomad. And I mean, sometimes dreams do come true, but I just don't see it happening here. A little bit of a warning that there might be a challenge coming in. And it's good reversal from Steven right there to take out failure as he attempts to swing the corner. Steven back on it. Good pre-fire right there. Gets Tex Horn yeah, down as well. Two again. members now of the yeah. defending side left. And that's where it's going to end. Markers is just waiting. With that MP7 focused on the doorway, easy clap there onto the Nomad. Great position on the side of UTD Green. But there were some things that we saw the Queens did a lot better that round where they had that initial clear upstairs. We could see that they were looking in the right spot. The one kryptonite within that round was droning information up above. You had the Ayana. It shouldn't necessarily be the sledge going in first and it's those little micro adaptations that could be turning the round in queen's favor where they just need that little bit of information that we can see utg is collecting based off the pulse and mozzie pick that round where so much information every single second was being fed to the defending team Eden, a maestro making an appearance now here in the defensive setup. I like that. He's a fun operator and definitely a strong operator on this map. Doesn't get a ton of play uh, in a lot of the current meta, but can still be quite advantageous if used correctly. Uh, ever since they kind of made changes to bulletproof cameras, Banks, I feel like Maestro in particular has been the operator that suffered the most out of that, uh, all things being what they are. Now, remind me, in terms of bans, uh, is there one operator who I would expect to see here, Banks, who is not banned that has not made an appearance at all on the defense? Do you know what, what I'm talking about? I don't, Corvac. I'm going to let you continue this one. <laughs> no, do you have a guess? 
Mira. Oh, yes, okay. Mira. Weird, yes. huh? <laughs> that nobody has run Mira here, considering that Mira, especially for this uh, planes and games point, is such a good operator. It's such a good Mira setup. Uh, and to not have her in any of these defensive rotations, I mean, obviously, UTD is still, green is still winning. It's just very interesting that she's not being played. Yeah, I think also we can look over to the Azami, which is my backup there. Where That's Azami, another the one. moment you, you rarely see both of them banned. If you prep to have both of them within your lineup, you are absolutely set, Corbett, for the reason that you could simply outmaneuver and outsmart your enemy. We talked about the start about being comfortable with setups. Mira and Azami add such an extra layer to every single setup that the moment you try to apply them, you're going to be stuck wondering what happened. It's a bit odd that they're kind of giving themselves a handicap, if I'm being honest. I mean, that said, the fact that Mira is so often banned, I think, means that some teams are a little hesitant to rotate her into their lineups. But the defensive setups for her on Villa are pretty well known by the majority of the player base. So I'm surprised that they haven't chosen to bring that out. The Azami is a good fill, could honestly take the place uh, of that maestro rather easily. And, and arguably, despite being a huge maestro fan, would probably bring a little bit more value when push comes to shove. Regardless, you can see the terror that the Rome has caused here, Illustrated Banks, one minute, 20 seconds in, and they just cannot push towards this point. We can also look at failure. If they were to toss that Nitro up above, then they would be able to collect that kill. And I, I feel like that's something, no matter where they are, they are cautious. But we're going to have a flurry of kills erupt to kill a fiend down. But uh, we'll be able to down Munchie. Munchie trading it out, leaving us at a 4v three favoring queens with a minute to go this is the best we've seen them especially on planes and games they're able to take control of 90 and i believe that should be the entire rome game established pre fine mark will give away their position meanwhile seal Graham will be able to take out texhorn also giving away the position of the mozzie down on stairs that leaves it all left up to marks on site a 3v1 this is queens around to take they just have to pinch the kills properly spraying out one down whipping up the pistol they'll be able to confirm it rotating right off the site towards red inside the landing they'll keep on spraying they have to get this plant down right Rather quick, Zuki is going to go for it with the 30 second mark, forcing marks to get a little bit more aggressive, trying to I deny it. It will not be so, and they're now stuck in this 1v2, questioning which angles to contest. C4 cooked out, no joy on that one. Sliver of HP slowly peeking around these corners. They have to find it, they'll fall back. Located on the drone, 30 seconds to reassess here for marks. Waiting, timing it. They know where one of their opponents is, but with not peeking that angle, they've had an opportunity to rotate. Which one are they holding? Is it a cross angle? So many questions yet to be answered, but they yeah, all will in the next 15 seconds. Claymore located, shot giving away their position, not checking the vault, and that's going to be Zucky to confirm the final kill, and Queens will snag their first round. Well, it's about time Queens managed to pick up a round there, and I've got to admit it was a uh, round that I was surprised that they won, Binks. Because, I mean, it, like I said, it took them so long to get into a position where they were actual com actually comfortable with execution, right? I mean, I think it was like a minute and 20 seconds before they really started to make moves, but they won their gunfights, which was great. The Rome didn't have as big of an impact on that round either, uh, and they were able to get the plant down too and force the time. It was an ideal round from Queens. Exactly. It's something that they're going to want to imitate again uh, as we come back to the same point, same defensive lineup. Again, I, I really would say you'd be okay dropping the Maestro here and adding an Azami or a Mira in instead. Uh, and also, not a huge fan of the placement of those Jaegers either. I mean, when you look at the kind of A area denial systems, those are a little bit vulnerable uh, to shots coming in from various sides. But uh, whatever. They're down where they are, I guess, so they will I, protect I think those also... areas. Corbeck, I, I love what you're saying there, because I think we can yeah, also go and look at how they'll be dealt with. Logically, how are these all these guys can be dealt with. And I would say IQ from down below is the optimal yeah. situation. Yeah. Every single one of those ADSs, bandit charges, and I believe... Yeah, Jaeger and possibly some Mozzies as well. All vulnerable from shooting from down below. That's not what you're looking for, and it can be very scary. A EE1D will be cooked out rather quick, hopefully trying to snag some roamers, or it could be Spongo Bob trying to take out to kill a fiend. They've been spotted out, and look at that Jaeger. I believe they're running the suppressor, Corbeck. So another interesting thing that you mentioned earlier on, and it's coming into fruition. 
Yeah, Munchie needs to be very careful here because obviously they knew there was contact down there somewhere in the basement. I think they had an okay idea that they heard something, but they did not deal with to kill a fiend, which means that, well, they'll be fiendishly waiting there in the basement for their opportunity to get a strike in. Failure Hero, of course, on the roam as well, though. Uh, this is perhaps a little bit more of a dangerous roam, kind of pushing out here alone over towards Trophy Statuary. There's not a lot of support from the team, and there's not a lot of trade potential either in this position so that's something that they're going to have to be careful about you you want to be able to trade off the roamers right if you can you don't want them to just die in a vacuum it's something that they've been pretty good about but it's not guaranteed to last forever i believe failure may have been droned out here they're spraying i believe it was caught by a mozzie trap are they aware of it no they're not failure to find one onto munchie there goes your lion both their e1d's was used but now they have to cool the cross control that recoil steven they won't be able to find it but seal graham with the cross angle will be able to collect that kill so it is the roma on the trophy side has now been cleared they also need to deal with texhorn who has made a statement here on red stairs knowing they have to hold it down with their life hey corbeck what is this the IQ down below, shooting out all the gadgets, and I can guarantee you by the fact we saw that bandit charge taken out, that the ADSs will no longer be a problem either. Great util usage from Queens on that IQ, and it should very much come into effect within this final minute of the round. That's a very good question there, and, and you did predict it quite well. Still 50 seconds left on the clock, and we don't really see Queens in a particularly threatening position here. That said, Sealgram is taking some territory. Sealgram getting clipped right there. I don't know if that came from below or from above, but SpongeBob, that's uh, on the same level right there. Just nails Texhorn. Takes him out of the equation completely. Triss here roaming around, all the in hand. Gets a little bit clipped coming through the door. Hopefully, we'll communicate that back to the team. Good swing from Trish right there to knock Bungle Bob out of the equation. And that just leaves three members of the attacking side here with about 15 seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to make some moves. They're really going to have to pick it up. And they've got the problem of To Kill a Fiend coming back up. Sealgram does actually check down the wrong staircase there. And immediately walks into the fire of the Alda. The other two team members jump in, and it's all finished off here by Tequila Fiend driving down the hallway next to games. Let's analyze that round really quickly, Corbeck, because it seemed like both those teams are doing a lot of positives there. We can see this opening part of the round. We have Tequila Fiend, then we have Spongo Bob clearing up the util down below. But I think what it ultimately came down to is Queens didn't stall out. They were constantly distracted. I, I feel like oftentimes people say, oh, the attacking team stalled out. They're not going anywhere. They were constantly had pressure from UTD Green. If it was the roam, we had to kill a fiend all the way on Astro Stairs getting hit by that air jab, notifying them. They constantly felt like the, the territory that they claimed was not truly theirs. So I believe leaving a flank drone could help with that matter. The moment they have territory, they get that drone, get anyone who's di uh, died watching them. There's a solution, but they just didn't have any time to push into Psychorp. Yeah, they didn't. And, uh, it, you know, this is a problem that they've run into before, right? Where they kind of get hung up. Such a juxtaposition compared to their previous attack things, where they did such a good job, right? Of getting their bodies onto Five the point, getting the kills. You saw the absolute reverse here. More dithering, a slower okay, approach. And ultimately, UTD Green was more than happy to punish that. So it's been a rough attacking half here for the members of Queens. Hopefully, their defensive half allows them to recover a little bit again there's just key operators missing here from the attacking side and honestly from the defensive side as well just no finger presence at all a real lack of lmgs in general too i think are just things that you are doing that are making it harder on you uh and i'm not sure that that's uh, something you should really be doing that said i do like the play of the osa here uh are kind of giving them an idea of what's going on in the room and getting full value out of the ballistic windows they are slowly advancing their push my biggest concern here once again is going to be time but IQ down below getting their job out of the way relatively fast as three bandit batteries. The fourth one's on the shield that gives freedom to the ace to start opening up these walls. They'll grab the battery and I can assume we'll start to see a bandit trick along the wall. But they'll throw it down right away. So if this information is reciprocated back towards the attacking team in the IQ, that bandit battery should be gone rather soon. 
So a little bit on that questionable side, but that is a very powerful wall panel to open. Indeed it is, and it's uh, a key tool for assaulting the point if you can really get in on it. B, speaking of getting in here, they're using this Osa very aggressively to just open up space. Munchie pushing forward into the master bedroom, even baiting out the C4, which is a little lackluster there from Marcus on the bandit. Osa continuing to play this very aggressively, but again, about 1 minute 21 seconds left in the round. Good opening there. That has unfortunately made life more difficult for Osa, though. It's another angle that they can get shot from, so that's something that they're going to have to be careful about here as they approach the site. Trish is also just waiting on that particular angle for somebody to peek their head around it and they still haven't taken care of to kill a fiend on the roam who will just like last round come swing back into this banks at a critical moment like the friggin riders of rohan and probably shut down queen's attack yeah this is probably one of the most tense moments because everything is balancing if the timing works out it could favor queens it might also favor ut T green is looking to find the first kill on to marks there goes your bandit they've already used their util here comes the ella a huge swing from trish finding all three kills on the side of queens to kill a fiend will also come in from behind as fire erupts Huge play from UTD <sighs> Green will net them the round. And a huge replay. We need a second just to grasp what exactly happened. Here comes the first, catching the Osa off guard, swinging all the way on the third to the Nomad. A highlight clip for UTD Green for sure. We can't even stop to consider all of the action on the other sides of the map, Attackers where all the pressure that Queens was applying they had the kill. It was just a matter of not advancing enough to be comfortable. It was a it was a mistake. I, it, it shouldn't have been allowed to happen the way it did. I, frankly, you shouldn't be giving up three kills like that to an you know an Ella that's just swinging in a doorway. Uh, and it plays back to something that I had talked about earlier, which is it was really hard for queens to get effective trades throughout those matches. And I think that just kind of runs that home. Like they could not trade off of the back of that. Uh, that's something that they're gonna need to improve on here over the season. You have to be in a position where you can quickly respond to kills. That said, I'm gonna put aside those attacking rounds and take a really quick look at what they have here on defense banks, which is a, a more sensible lineup. Uh, a lot of more, I would argue, meta operators in this. Interesting though, that they have not chosen to really go with a serious hard breacher. Uh, a la, you know, your um, your bandit, right? They're not going to run that. They're going to run Mute, uh, who should actually be relatively effective in slowing this attack down because the Thermite charges in particular are, are suffering, or do suffer against Mute Jammers. So that's something to keep an eye on. Time ticking away. And we can see more of a default attack. I don't understand the, the taking Dokubi. Or sorry, not taking Doki, taking Kali and then rotating and playing on the side of the bedroom. I always believe that if you're going to take the Kali, you have to situate her on the study wall or window, all for the use of playing that constant pressure. Because the moment you leave that open, you're, you're opening people like the Maestro when UTD Green was on defense to rotate in and use that angle massively against the attackers. So, interesting to see exactly how UTD grows about this approach. Yeah, I mean, it's an, it's an interesting sort of uh, thing that you have to consider as Sealgram picks up an early kill right there, and that's what they like to see, to kill a fiend here trying to get one the other way. And honestly, I'm surprised they didn't manage to secure it, making use of the suppressor there as well. Ooh, Trish with the shots on Sealgram, and that's something that they can't be particularly happy about. Yet another one of those zombie barricades coming out right there. The Kiba barrier is basically set up all over this point to make life more difficult for the attackers now moving into minute Ooh. territory and they're peeking into the range of the Kali and Trish is happy to pick that one up and add it to the bag. Yeah, I've never come to realize how powerful Kali can be when challenging the small angles a zombie opens up. But we can't fail to mention we're still in that 3v3 stance with a minute to go. Failure pushing up towards main stairs and towards study. This is a very key position because it's going to pressure the players of Queens even further to question the angles that they are capable of playing. 
but time continues to tick away and it seems they're going to be going for a joint 90 as well as main push impact trick will be successful from munchie in grabbing that thermite charge but they should still have one more to Ooh. use meanwhile failure will tip the scales in their favor and steven is down leaving it all left up to zuki inside of game's room with three full health attackers to contest failure to confirm the kill vault being opened up 15 seconds they just have to find enough time and that's diffuser down but they won't keep their head down as failure will collect onto their third kill of the round if i am correct and that is match point or map point for utd green <laughs> getting ahead of yourself there getting too I am, excited i am <laughs> they I, you know i got to admit they they really made something out of that kali pick because i did not like you said it was an odd angle to take when you had kali in the bank but man they uh they made it work for them right adapt improvise overcome or whatever it is uh interesting to note by the way the trade potential of utd green is very solid you saw that okay, well demonstrated right there on the last kill zuki gets the kill onto the corridor i believe it was to kill a scene there on the thermite who got whacked immediately zuki is slotted from a different angle obviously it's a 3v1 situation but still the trade potential was there it's something that has set utd green apart from queens throughout these last seven rounds now you're looking at map point here banks this is not a great situation for queens not how you want to start the season or your first map whatsoever i think the most important part right now is to, to either full send everything you have into this round Five seconds or to start remaining. rolling your shoulders back accept what is going to happen this round as hard as that is to be or what's going to happen this map and use the rest of it use everything you can to allow that mental reset and i i'm such a huge fan of ensuring that any time that you're talking or moving in a map doesn't go your way if you don't hit that reset button you have to let maps go. Sometimes other teams have it figured out better. Queens had no way of doing their research and knowing that UTD Green could have this Bomb prep for We know that this could have been their pick. So you just have to take everything into account, roll your shoulders back, and go into what could be the final round of Villa. Indeed. And I mean, I think there's something to be said for your kind of, you know, just accept the sort of inevitable. I don't not not advocating giving up, by the way. I don't think that's what you, you or I are saying. Oh, good. Good angle there from Spungle Bomb. Unfortunately, uh, it was wasted there on the Gemini, but still good angle nonetheless. But yeah, it's not like giving up. I think it's just, you know, learn your lessons from this, right? And prepare to come back and be more effective the second time around. And my God, Binks, that is a gun I have not seen in many many moons there in the hands of that sophia i almost didn't recognize it i'm like oh the lmg got a new skin why is this so small <laughs> that looks a lot smaller than it did last time that didn't look like a machine gun so i'm interested to see what the recoil will look like but we have mentioned that it's back to old siege meaning that Perhaps this recoil will be a lot more manageable, and perhaps the Sophia could have a very relevant place within this lineup. We can also look over at Texhorn using the Buck, a gun that also notoriously has a more difficult recoil. But only time will tell. It could be a little social experiment. But using the stuns, trying to clear everything out, it will not be a smart clear because we won't even get to see the gun use a spungle bomb. We'll catch marks very out in the open and be able to set up a second zombie barricade after all the Zofia util was dispersed. Now, Texhorn here doing some room clearing. That's a good frag grenade from a below. Just a little missed time. It oh. won't be able to secure the kill, but good follow-up from Failure Hero right there to immediately take down Sealgram. That brings it up to 12 and 4 on the round there for Failure Hero, who has just been spick spectacular. I mean, honestly, has been putting on a great performance here for the team. Now they have to worry about a potential breach. Good play by Steven there, though, to deny it. I don't know if they lost the charge there or not i certainly think they did not really making things difficult they cannot seem to get around this bandit trick it's been a long time since i've seen a bandit trick but it doesn't change the fact that they have come in from every single corner kelly switching playing all around the angles and it will be utd green to snag the victory seven to one because at the end of the day corbett doesn't just come down to util it comes down to gunfights 
I mean, that was sort of the defining trend throughout a lot of those, uh, a lot of those rounds there, Banks, wasn't it? Gunfights were just predominantly the area in which things were being determined. And I, I, it's a rough start for Queens. Like, there's no way to beat around the bush about it. It's a rough start, but there are lessons that can be learned from this. You can pick up on the play style of your opponents, and hopefully you can adapt to that play style so you can be more effective in the future. And that's really the burden that's going to be put on Queens University right now. No, they need to adapt to the play style that's being adopted by their opponents because their opponents, UTD Green, has done a phenomenal job with that roam. I think that's primarily yeah. the defining Huge. point where you were never safe if you if if you were on Queen's side. So I think it comes to an idea of how do you ban in this next map? How do you change your play style? And that's something for them to talk about and really understand. But on that 100%. note, we will be taking a five-minute break, and we will be right back with some more NECC Champions Rainbow Six Siege action.
Welcome back to the NECC Rainbow Six Siege Champions Division. This is Queens taking on UTD Green, and we just saw a decisive victory for UTD Green <laughs> over on Villa Corbic. Yeah, it was decisive, Banks. Not a lot more I think they could really be said about it. It was a 7 1 kind of uh shellacking. Uh, and I again I'm not gonna I don't I don't wanna I don't wanna poison the well here, my friend, but how do you feel about this, considering that uh you you might have a little bit more uh skin in this game that you initially led on here? Yes, I guess it is fair to say that I am a Queen's student. I do attend this university in Canada. Uh, however, I can say with certainty that I am completely taking myself out of the game and trying to give you guys the best content that I can professional. today. Professional. Professional. Exactly. That's yeah. how we have to be. And I'm fortunate to be on Queen's campus right now at uh, the CFRC radio station broadcasting. So it, it's perfect. It all goes full circle where I'm able to support my school by giving them a good broadcast and they give us, me, us a good game. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Well, let's hope we get a good game. I think our next map coming off, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say it's Clubhouse or is you it Oregon? Correct. I, can't, yeah. I think it's you Clubhouse, yes. Clubhouse, and then if we see a third map, we are going to see that Oregon. So, oh man, look at that, that map veto ready to go. So we're on to the pick of UTD Green, which is going to be Clubhouse with Queens starting on attack. So we've already seen them have a little bit more difficulty on that attacking side let's see if that changes for a more familiar and played out map such as clubhouse yeah i mean again villa or clubhouse oregon these are the mo probably the most played maps in rainbow <laughs> six siege right there's no denying that too that's just like fact and pretty much any level these are the most played maps it's like summoner's rift is the most played map in league of legends you don't have a choice sometimes you just gotta go to club uh and and you know, it's it's a challenge, I think, but it's also good because if you go to these bread and butter maps, it usually makes it a little bit easier for a team that's on the back foot to recover. That being said, uh, Queens is starting off on the attack again, and I think that is incredibly problematic. They would be much more comfortable if they were coming in here on the defense. Hopefully, they have some good pre-prepared strategies Why? for how to deal with these club heads offenses. And that means Thatcher is still on the board, but that will at least initially benefit Queens here. Honestly, Banks, he's going to be a must pick with no Maverick in the pool. He will. I'm a little bit curious about that jackal ban though where that would have been such a useful asset for the queen's attack because we saw them struggling with that roam clear and that confirmed roam clear so if they weren't going to be playing that finca i believe going and banning it on a map like clubhouse then that that's what i'd be looking for of course we don't know how the operator picks for queens are going to change but we can go and look at that defensive side with Cade and mira being taken off the board I don't entirely understand the Cade ban because the moment you take a Thatcher, Cade does become obsolete. So a little bit of a tricky situation, and it could be that perhaps UTD Green wants to take that Cali, but it's it's a bunch of give or take. We won't know until we get to that halftime. Right now, it looks like Queens is opting to take both Thatcher and Cali, but there's a beautiful thing called the six-pick Corbex, so we don't have to worry about that yet. Yeah, and I mean, to locate and as many I'm going to harp on it again, right? Queens has definitely made things harder on themselves by some of the picks that they're taking. This Kali pick, I mean, okay, don't get me wrong. I think Kali is a very cool operator. I think Kali is a fun operator. I think she is great to play sometimes. Is this that time? No. I don't see what Kali brings to this lineup that is of fundamental good value here. You're now entering with two hard breachers and two anti hard breach now operators you just don't need that right the thing that has been killing queens is the roam game and that is why i'm very happy to see munchie making that last minute swap uh, you know i would have taken a nomad i'll take a doke as well anything that's going to help them perhaps shut down on the inevitable roam presence I, i'm curious to see how this runs out they did initially they did switch off of it to take the doke which is definitely a much better pick but they still have that two hard breach, which I'm a fan of for Clubhouse. But I don't see the productivity when you can just go and take perhaps a secondary hard breach device on something like Basement. But I could very easily be proven wrong in this scenario. And I'm looking forward to be proven wrong in that in that case. 
So the initial roam clear is well underway and they're looking for the player inside of bar. Meanwhile, this maestro using the bailiff to open up multiple holes down below. Marks will also be taken away from their situation as their phone will start ringing, forcing them to rotate all the way back towards Sage, giving Queens the entrance they need. Yeah, and I mean, good pressure being applied very early on. You obviously want to secure the double bar as quick as you can, or bar stage if you really want to use this proper terminology, but double bar is more entertaining. And they're going to make it as snappy as possible to make their way in here. They've got hatches to open as well, and those hatches are not denied, by the way. That's something that is very much worth, worth pointing out here. No Kaid in the lineup means that you can't easily deny those hatches. They should be a no-problem opening here for the Hibana but they haven't really moved the hip into position quite yet. And that, I think, is just slowing down this attack, right? You also, again, have a roamer present on the top floor. It's markers on the Valkyrie this time. Uh, and that's something that you're going to have to deal with as finally the top hatches start to break. I think the problem is they're also going to have to deal with Maestro going for the impact trip over on the kitchen hatch. Meanwhile, I also want to mention these drones that we saw on the second floor. Even if they found one of the players, especially on the site right there, they spotted out the Jaeger. But these drones are collecting old information. You can say, oh, to your team, he's behind bar inside of uh, church. That doesn't do much for you when all that time they haven't pressured him, they haven't rotated anything around, meaning that Mark is still able to sit nice and comfortably upstairs, not having to move. Even if they are droned out, they pick a different position. It is very concerning. There's no Habana pellets left either. So much of the potential that this round for Queen's University had is very much dissipating and disappearing because the players in church can now play extremely comfortably. This is a good combo move, though, using the Thermite Charge and the Dokubi Call at the same time. Puts pressure, for sure, on the members of the defensive side to kill a Fiend. She'll die first here. Gets capped by Sealgram entering in. And that'll swing around. Munchie gets hit. That's a little bit of friendly fire right there. Fortunately, Spongle Bob is able to hit an enemy target. Spongle Bob dies to friendly fire again. An absolute disaster here for the side of Queens. And now the defenders are clapping back. Texworn very low on health, though. So Queens, despite blundering in, might be able to complete this relatively well. And sure enough, Zuki does get the final kill right there. But uh, a racy moment, or a couple of racy moments, to say the least. It was a little bit worrisome for a few seconds there when you see the flick from the Thermite. You can just imagine what was going through their head. The moment they push into sight, they think they have control and they have their own teammate flick right towards them. That's when you have a little bit of a heartache or a, a headache at the same time because you don't know if you're gonna get shot in the head thankfully it all worked out besides the nade kill but let's go and diagnose that round for the perspective of utd green they did a great job of the initial round great job of the roam but i think they didn't use the fact that they weren't droned properly they didn't go and apply enough pressure onto the players of queens like they did on villa the roamers on villa corbett constantly made their presence known and that forced queens to be uncomfortable with their push and that just didn't happen last round no it certainly didn't and i mean it's it's again i mean queens i think was lucky to get away with that round there were some serious issues on display right there communication and coordination right like you can't be capping your own team members as they come around quarters. You know, like the grenade, okay, that happens. Sometimes grenades take a weird bounce because every game has weird grenade mechanics. Trust me, like, hell let loose, cannot throw a grenade through a window to save my life, and often it doesn't. But you can't be shooting your teammates, you know, because you think they're a defender. That's just really problematic. So, I mean, they're lucky to have got that round. Whether that trend is going to continue very hard for me to say and again they keep insisting on playing the Kali and I just not a fan I feel like a one I feel like a broken record but god come on <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to tell you here okay you, you have a thermite charge on the wall that that's probably my biggest fear like if anyone heard that the van has time to rotate never do that that's just cardinal sin but there was no protection on it it's nowhere near the site second one will be placed that's two bandit charges for the cali and there's two more that are now being placed on the wall and i believe two cali lances still remaining is that a bandit that's that's an m870 this shotgun. man is tricking 
man is tricking and he does have a shotgun he's tricking he's got tricking a shotgun he's tricking the bandit charges this man's all over the place uh, i should say uh, bandit is a man to kill a fiend is a her but she's crazy i don't know again look at how good this bandit trick is this completely stumped him that what eight no emps and collie lances Oh my gosh, they didn't even have a castle barricade up to oh. protect the bandit! <laughs> That's a free kill! I mean, it's down there. I, oh man, great play. She's a Killer champ, Fiend. dude. Oh my what? goodness, and they, said crazy. they couldn't have even defended if the long angles opened up. They have a shotgun! <laughs> they have a shotgun, Cormac. What were they gonna do? And this has left Queen's entire attack in shambles. They don't know exactly where they are going to pressure from, causing failure to sit quite comfy inside a construction. They have two angles to contest, make that three with the bedroom window. But it's just a matter of Queen's to put the pressure on, which they have not started to do. And I, I said last map that they did not stall out. I'm taking it back, because this time it feels as if they have. They have indeed, and I mean, I don't know if that's the blood, like one of the best bandit tricks I've ever seen, or if that was just the other side kind of botching that. It was really well executed, just and stick it, it has in the highlight reel. Stick sucked it in the, the highlight momentum. reel. Yeah, it's completely sucked the momentum out of this attack. You're 100 percent right. Now the smoke canisters are going out, delaying things. You've still got bandit bear, or I should say, castle barricades. You have to deal with. Like you're not even anywhere in the position to threaten the site. And Queen's University, this has been an ugly round for them. Uh, hopefully, one that they can learn from. But again, Trish is on a bit of a tear here. He's got two kills in the bank. Failure getting in as well. A brave effort right there to swing in through the window but immediately cut down a response and Trish will finish it off and that is that we can also talk about that round I like that Queens tried to slow down and talk about what was going on that is something that's very important within a round however the True. biggest problem within that round Corbett was that we had five players alive within the last 15 seconds that doesn't mean that both teams are doing exactly what they're supposed to it means that there's a little bit less there's not enough pressure being applied by the attackers in those types of scenarios because it wasn't that utd green was playing a turtle strategy they were playing very Attack safe up. angles and, and that's for bomb. queens to use their utility flashes sophia charges if you have them any sort of stun to properly clear out and with that success utd green has the cusp of a flawless round with Five kills in the span of 15 seconds, like I said, only losing one of their players just to show their superior position. That brings us to one to one. And we're going to the final site that we have not, or other site in the main rotation that we haven't seen yet, which is going to be Cash as well as CCTV. So I'm interested to see how Queens deals with that same extension meta. I think, okay, if, if anybody out there is watching, if you are another Siege team, in this match if you are either of these teams there's a really important lesson to be learned there that a lot of people overlook which is what binks mentioned by the way if somebody is bandit tricking you on that wall you can fire through the gym window and usually kill them so if you are going to play a castle you should have a castle barricade set up there i think that's just a good like teachable moment here in this match and it's something of value uh that most players can take away but let's mm -hmm. focus on ctcd cash used to be the primary site banks not the primary site anymore i'd say it's very unpopular with a lot of players munchie is going to demonstrate part of the reason why that is but you do actually have to get those retero drones to connect is the bandit tricking going to be successful this time that's the real question yes oh my goodness the time unstoppable is, you okay all you have to do is you have two retaros left i still believe that's the most important wall that you need to get right now either you get pressure from steam on the other side you have the thatcher ready the Okay, the Thermite, you need to be placing your Thermite charge before they throw it. It is on Thatcher to know exactly the timing. Because if you time it properly, it makes it practically impossible for the Bandit to pick it up. They have to shoot it. Too soon. Once again, a little bit, or sorry, too late. Because now they are easily able to put it down, and we can't forget that, look, four Bandit batteries can be placed at a time on a single wall if they want it. But there's the Rotero finally being placed, but you need to place it, because there's nothing left on that wall. And we focus now an entire half the round Corbeck on that wall, but where's the pressure elsewhere? It is all on CC window, causing for an absolute conundrum to take place where the players on the side of Queens don't have the pressure they need, 
and they definitely don't know that there's still a player down below in the form of the mute that could toss that nitro up. There's such a lack of flexibility in this attack. This is target fixation at its finest. And again, it's another teachable moment. They're doing well, though, to adapt here. Finally, they've given up on the idea of the wall. They're making their playstyle more fluid, and they're focusing on getting kills, and it's really working. They turned this into a 4v2 just by switching up their strategy. It was like they had to expend every possible utility option to try and get that dang wall open before they I just went for something else, and it's totally worked. Fuse is down. Failure Hero, the last one left alive, comes swinging through the ump 45, firing away. Those shots hit the cocaine, not the player. And Failure Hero is left in a very unenviable position here, checking multiple angles down. 30 seconds left on the diffuser. The bullets come raking in. And poor Castle, what is he to do in this scenario? Good swing, tries to find the kill. And Spunglebob will shut him down for good. So we, we diagnosed exactly what Queens was doing because we had a great view of their perspective on that round, especially with the wall. However, we didn't start to talk about UTG Green's fixation on that same wall. True. True. Because we, true. we have two different aspects of that round. We have the push that then came into Garage from Queens, which can completely threw UTD's sense of direction off. It felt like they were doing spins on a on a roller coaster ride. They get off and they're a little bit motion sick, Corbeck, because it felt like they didn't know how to move around again. the moment that wall wasn't opened up. And I've seen this from a few teams, both in Collegiate as well as in the Tier 3 scene, where you'll see that once that CC wall is successfully tricked, some teams will be like, okay, now which angles do I hold? Where am I safe? Because the angles that changed aren't necessarily too different. You have some more comfortable angles, but those angles are still going to be contested. And I feel like UTD Green didn't know how to rotate around that scenario. And that was ultimately their kryptonite of the round when the inevitable push came from Queens. Yeah, and I think it was good. I'm happy to see that Queens was able to adapt, right? That's something that I think that this team was really struggling with on Villa. It did take them a while to reach that inevitable conclusion, but when they did reach the conclusion, it came out very good for them. Uh, and that's something that they need to remember, right, for future rounds. They need to, to not forget that that's what they can do to really maximize efficiency and effectiveness uh, in their attacking rounds. Now you're looking at Basement, which is a difficult site to take. It took them a very long time to get their attack set up here last time, and it was a very confusing attack. But theoretically, they should have the tools in place to make it less confuzzling. Oh, no. Markers through the window, the classic peak. And I wasn't sure if it was going to work there, but the old pea shooter, the MPX, coming up big. And that's a terrible loss, too, because that is one of your hard breachers done and dusted. It does really hurt this push because if we look, it's all left up to Zuki. And where did the main push come from last time, Corbeck? It all came from that church wall. Meaning they're going to have to either completely change from what they did last round and adapt, which I, I'm quite confident after that last round, Queens has the capability of doing. But it's a matter of how effectively they clear everything out. Great use of the Ayana Gemini Replicator to spot out this Valkyrie of Mark. They know that they're going to have to deal with him. It's just a matter of how exactly they'll do it. Sending a Rotero drone up above is probably one of the newest approaches I've seen to droning in a long time. Because as you hear that explosion, it is definitely one of the Kryptonites. And it appears that those Skyrus on the kitchen hatch will also go off. And thank you to our observer for mentioning and showing us that there's also a Jaeger to kill a fiend, which has notoriously been great on that roam, still at large. And there's the second set of Skyrus detonating on the kitchen hatch. So just like that, Corbeck, we have a very different round from the first. Yeah, and they're getting these hatches open, which is the, you know, underlying objective for any attacking team. They lack a sledge, so they can't really get to work on the floors. But again, they've not really built roam protection into this. It didn't matter so much last time they attacked this site, but it is a, an issue that they're going to want to deal with. That said, they're getting pretty aggressive right here. Sealgram pushing with the Gemini early on, just giving them a good idea of what might await them. And I think they know that there's at least one defender down there, but fail clips the wings of Zuki uh, with that all the straight up through the hatch, and that's definitely slowed the roll here for Queens. Interesting to say the least, Corbic. Svongo is pushing right into possibly unwelcoming arms of the defenders, but to be able to trickle right by them on the roam. You know, Trish is still on site. 
Seal will be able to find one, makes Bongo able to find Texhorn. That's one of the roamers gone. Marks is still at large. Failure will get their second on the round. They have to get this plant down. All of them to Munchie. There's going to be a flurry, a fire of red, even Corbeck, as UTG Green will collect all the remaining frags on the round. A decisive end right there for UTD, and they have to be happy about that end result. And there it is on screen again, that spawn peak. I mean, gosh knows how many players in Siege history have fallen for that, and yet they still keep falling for it every once in a while. And it felt really like Queens never seemed to really, you know, get back equilibrium there after that initial kill they were sort of Attackers looking for answers and again i mean some communication errors for both sides we had a little bit of an overlap on the roam and what have you but it was queens at time who, who felt like they were the team that was struggling a little bit more to adapt we are back now to this gym bedroom site and we'll see if queens has learned anything from their previous attempt to break open the jacuzzi wall i think that, that's going to be the biggest part of the round for me. Floris is being taken this time. And I think if you time it properly, it's all down to the timing. That Thatcher EMP cannot just take care of the or, or Rooney there. But you will be able to detonate it. You can just shoot a Floris right through the drone hole and detonate right away. Get rid of that castle barricade. Open the window. You don't even need the Thatcher at that point. You can just use the Floris. Thatcher's not necessarily even needed for this round. It's true. I mean, you you could indeed do that. Uh, you can also roll in grenades. I mean, there's lots of ways that the bandit trick can be countered from this angle. It's just you have to be able to, to, to move them through. Already, you're using an exothermic charge here to open up an entry into uh, the, the CCTV room. That's going to allow you to push on cash. Now, this is more reminiscent of what we would see a lot of pro teams do, right? There's a whole extended skirmish that happens out here over in cash and CCTV room. And it does look like UTV Green wants to commit to that. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Queens is really invested in it. And by the looks of it, they're back at the dang jacuzzi wall. They are not going to give up this dream to kill a fiend here popping down the bandit batteries and there's that frag grenade no. rolled in and they're not oh they're so close and Come they on. will get it up in time ridiculous it's all down to timing we saw sledge throw in i believe not one but two nades the emp works through walls it disables that all you have to use is time your utility drone out to see where it's located you have a flores now the nade will go off sell a freezing charge detonated but you need to follow that up with the flores have the extra pressure i get that they took the flores off and i keep going back and going back to it but when you don't use the utility that is available to you then that is when you start to pain yourself even more making these kills even easier for the defenders to accomplish well, certainly their routes of attack on the point have been severely limited by yet another failure to breach the jacuzzi window. That's going to leave everything in the hands of the guns, and the guns are heating up, but it's for UTD, and they'll get two kills early on. The UMP-45 valiantly defending, and that is the Thatcher and the Sledge, the SAS Ops, taken out early on. Zuki stepping forward into a cloud of toxic gas. Seal Graham wants a piece of it, too, jumps in right afterwards. Now Trish plays the delaying game that is the purview of all smoke players a little bit of a wibbly wobbly there uh and struggling it looks like to pick up the grenade but hey it happens to the best of us zuki there punishing trish for that momentary delay oh you can't even fault them for that you know it's like a little micro movement and they get the barricade but the action continues to kill and will be stuck but it doesn't matter because failure will find their third kill on the round and be looking for a fourth on to steven left. swing towards cc there is a player it's the azami of marks and they will be able to find their pick in a beautiful round from T green as they will be able to pick up bedroom for the second time those bandit tricks are really uh, killing the vibe here for Queens on the attack. It's it's not a situation you see much in this day and age. Ban no, bandit tricking has not like been that. vogue <laughs> in so long, but really impressive indeed. Also, by the way, very unfortunate. Looked a little too much to the left there when they came around the corner with that shotgun, and Suki was happy to capitalize on an easy kill. I think if they stuck to the original, if that throw was not messed up, that's an easy kill for the smoke. That was yes, so well 100%. executed. They completely 
blocked off. Normally we see smoke block off angles. That was a moment where they're completely cornered, nowhere to go, and it forces the aggression. That was beautiful play by the smoke on the side of the ATD green. So interested to see if they will be able to reapply those. Now, quarterback, it's time to play. Will they trick it? That's right. Tune in again to UTD Green to kill a fiend. Will they trick out Queens with all the U-tail they're bringing? Flores, Thatcher, Thermite, Ace, oh my. See in the next coming seconds. They should not even be given the option. Like, they should not even be given the option here. They should be so aware of what this is gonna look like that they should have a plan in place to counter it. For example, a frag grenade from below and to kill a fiend, that's the end of her, right? Like she can't stay there if you frag her from below. That floor is explodable, just go for it. Take the garage, push in from that angle, push in from the master bedroom side. Do not get hung up on the need to breach this wall. But again, we see the combo of Thatcher and Thermite setting up to try and do their best to get this open. At least, at least Sealgram is putting on a little pressure from an opposite direction. I think the other thing we have to consider, Corbeck, is like the. I, I, I don't like to be making pro analogies, but if you look at the way pros will often play sites, especially with exterior walls, exterior walls are the last thing to come undone in a site because half the time they don't open up extremely necessary angles, and that's what teams are used to. But there is exactly what we need to go for. Sealgram able to find the nade kill. Meanwhile, it's also refrag from the bandit, so much she's off the board, but that's two clear and open holes on the side of CC and Queens on their final round of attack will finally be able to overcome the bandit tricking but are they ready for the roam game of failure they are not as the ayana will get caught in the repel animation leaving them failure also free to rotate all the way back towards site fail just continues to be a, a persistent nuisance here for this queen's team on these roads and they have yet not been able to master a way of keeping him in a little box now they've managed to get that holes open by the way and they're not really getting any value off of them so it's a little unfortunate because so much blood and treasure has been expended over the last couple of rounds to get that wall open and now you finally have the wall open and you know it's it's not all it's cracked up to be it's like meeting your heroes in person Oh no, Corbeck, I, I'll, we'll discuss the, the meeting your heroes in person later. I need to discuss that one with you. We have a big <laughs> game to unpack here with a minute to go. Pressure being applied by Queens. A 3v4 uphill battle with the angles they have established because they have vacated CC. They have one C4 remaining for Marks and that could be used down below, which that's exactly where that mute is waiting to be. So the round could already be decided if Queens does not choose to push rather quickly they also have all two smoke canisters remaining so default is a not a viable option how will teams overcome this and why is construction window still not open regardless Smoke will be able to get the first kill refrag from failure that's her second kill on the round 2v3 spongo slowly pushing up the stairs proximity mine will give away their position but spongo still to find the kill to text one triple kill from failure will also even things out and trish with the Mossberg shotgun to round things out at a 4 2 half, favoring UTD Green. Well, UTD Green's got to be happy with their defensive side. I mean, they lost the two rounds, but a 4 2, that's still a very positive outcome for them. So uh, they can give themselves a good pat on the back and now prepare to pick up the defense. On the other side, we'll see what Queen's musters. Now they are set in the defensive role, and it looks like they are going to run a bandit of their own. It's a bandit sort of night, apparently, here in the NECC. Binks, uh, everybody wants a piece. Attackers need to locate and defuse bomb. I think... Corbett, I agree with what you said, but we have to unpack right now. Why can't we meet our heroes? <laughs> it's what they say, isn't it? You're never supposed to meet your heroes. Like, it's always going to be disappointing, right? That's, that's just what they say. Do you think I don't we know who they idolize, is. Do we idolize them too much? Of course. Are we idolizing the, the brilliant bandit strip from UTT Green too much? It's a whole question, Corbeck, of how exactly are we going to have a way of knowing, especially within this NECC, who the heroes and the zeros of this match have been. 
Uh, I mean, I didn't want to throw you into a, a downward philosophical spiral there, Binks, but uh, I, I think that that banner tricking was very impressive. Like, on balance, I, I obviously think that there's some errors were made by cleans, but I think it was very impressive, and Tequila Fiend should be quite proud of herself for her ability to, to effectively manage that. Now, and, and, though, and whatever I mean, headset she has. Yes, and whatever headset is involved as well. That That's a good headset. You want to get another one of those when you can. Now we'll see it from the reverse slope, though. And, ooh, the tricky Ricky, not there. Zuki can't get back to the wall fast enough. But unfortunately, they're going to get baited out. Can they get the No, they can't. Now no, this huh? is uh, how you don't ban a trick on the other side. Unfortunate. Sometimes the headphones just aren't going to help you out too much. So regardless, they will get that wall open. I also want to highlight a different operator that was taken, which is the Twitch. But when that wall is open, you have to be aware of the angles as Marks will be able to secure a free kill onto the Bandit of Zuki, giving the man advantage on the side of UTD Green. But they also have not applied any pressure towards the Azami in Garage, meaning that it is still very contested the moment they try to move into any vulnerable area. Great use of Nade as well, as Steven will fall to it with one, oh, yeah, one more Nade still remaining on the side of Marks. Failure will see the foot, not able to properly understand it, not properly able to hear the audio cue, and that will allow for Steven to get right back up and challenge the gunfight, win it out. Two kills on the side of UTD Green, trades back and forward, rounds us all out at a 2v3 quarterback with a lot of unanswered questions. Indeed, it is a lot of unanswered questions. And now Sealgram here holding up on the outside edge still has control of the garage, but that's necessarily a guarantee of potential pushback. Munchie has no idea, by the way, that there's an attacker pushing in from the opposite direction. Gets clapped right there. Trish with the headshot. Sealgram, though, fighting it out. Gets one, checks back on that window again and gets hit one more time. Can't bring down the second kill. And Markers again securing another decisive kill. That time to win the round here and to start the Queen's defense off on the wrong foot. That really shows that when you are looking at the defensive side, CCTV actually has the lowest win rate for defenders out of all the sites on Clubhouse. So just an interesting statistic to throw at you there. And I believe that round very much came down to Queen's position where they had the proper one, but that was such a beautiful use of the smoke that of which I believe came from either the Twitch or the Thermite, that it allowed them to have such a strong hold. And those cross singles, just that they weren't there. There's a few things to unpack, but the other thing I do want to unpack this time is the fuse, because fuse can be placed on reinforced walls. Do you think that they would put that on after they've opened both of them up? So you open up one side of the wall, then you repel on the other one, throw a fuse charge on it to clear the rest of the utility. Do you think that's going to go somewhere else? I mean, they could use it that way if they choose to bring a fuse. It looks like uh, Fail is switching off of the fuse. He's going to bring an Ash instead, which is more in line with some of the stuff that we've seen from UT Green. Uh, it's an interesting operator choice. It's just hard to get really good to find value out of a fuse because it's difficult to find where he fits in. You know, overall, uh, you, you can't you can't really place him particularly well, but Fail has picked up Ash instead. Twelve to four on this round. Another bumper, uh, you know, map here for Fail tonight has been very convincing in their performance. And this is again putting the members of Queens in a very difficult position here. They're going to try the bandit trick of their own to keep this wall secure, and it's just going to be very hard to do, especially with this Twitch drone in the uh, in the that consideration blocking? as Ooh. well. Yeah. It does block it actually i don't think the twitch boom can get in there without destroying uh that goyo trap very interesting mechanic at play right now bandit constantly throwing them down and there's the vertical pressure we've been looking for you do have the azami if you try to block it on up but it does sound like the thermite charge is not going to be successful azami is still waiting don't know where bandit is with their charges not in time don't do it you're gonna die to that to kill a fiend, very prone on denial of walls. You don't want to mess with reinforcements when they are around. Oh, Able to located. snag a kill with their thermite charge will leave UTD Green at the advantage at a 4v5. Swing around down below. Failure will also be able to collect their kill onto Spongle. There goes your zombie. You don't want to see that type of operator die early on in the round because that is a lot of wasted utility with everything that is brought to the board. 
Comes to kill a feed, plays both sides of the wall right there. Does a good job. It's both hard breach denial and a hard breach attacker. And now Sealgram is, uh, well, that's a scary prospect trying to challenge Akali there with the uh, attack rifle, but apparently it works. Shouldn't have, but it did. And Sealgram now backing up behind the cover yet again. Munchie pressuring from another side here, just trying to stop them from getting any farther into the point. A 2v1 situation. Sealgram and Munchie covering opposite angles. Sealgram's really struggling to get good lines of sight set up. And these Azami Kiva barriers are worth their weight in gold right now. Uh, as Munchie begins to push their way onto the site, Munchie takes a bunch of fire and now in a very difficult position indeed, maybe forced to consider a swing. I think the Munchie can just relax for a second. We don't oh. know if they have any. Oh! Anyone to rely on. Meanwhile, Trish will push in, pop right out of nowhere. Didn't even see them with the outline. Munchie now is stuck between a rock and a hard place. We'll see that. The replicator will be thrown out. Beautiful oh. deception on the side of UTD Green with the fake plant. Swing around to find the Goyo. You have to use those audio cues, but especially moments like that, it is so hard to trust. There's beautiful layers to that, by the way, as you get a slow motion replay there of Zuki getting annihilated by that exothermic charge they do in fact kill it's easy to forget that they uh, are a big explosion but they are indeed a big if localized explosion i will say that end of round scenario right there there's layers of trickery in that because there's the fake plant and then the run in to make it look like they were going to anticipate goyo coming out of cover to go for it. it's just like they anticipated goyo coming out of cover so they run that in goyo obviously shoots thinking that he's got the right target which allows the swing on the other side very creative play there from ut green if they came up with that on the fly they should be very proud of themselves on the back side of that success we're now going to the basement of match point not not map points I, I made that mistake last time, Corbett. Not again. We're on match point basement, Arsenal Club. Church of Clubhouse. What I need, and this is not a, Attackers are this is not a maybe, maybe this, maybe that. This is a must situation. Must win four consecutive rounds for Queens, where we must see that they are properly isolating angles on this defensive end, and we must see that they are properly denying the approach of UTD Green. So this could be an approach like impact nading on the side of the kitchen hatch, or it could also be setting up with a smoke inside a tunnel. Two things of which we are not seeing, it seems much more of a turtle, where they are allowing UTD Green to have a lot more comfort. This time they, however, have taken the fuse, and this is now extremely dangerous. It is good that they're not going for the impact as we saw last time as it's almost completely free. Clearing out the entirety of church, cooking out all these ADS utility is not going to be even remotely a problem in their mind. I'm very concerned, Corbett, because once again, within this round, too much has been opened in such a little amount of time. Yeah. No, you're right, Banks, and unfortunately, it's not looking particularly good for Queens either. I mean, the, finally, we see the fuse, right, being used pretty effectively to just deny a lot of space. That's something that they have to anticipate here and, and kind of deal with, and they're sort of being punished for it, I would say, at the moment, just looking at how this has played out so far. Spungle Bob here. I mean, you, you don't envy him this position, having to cover so many angles, and that allows Trish to slip in. Good trade, though. Munchie there coming in off the back angle. You need to be circling the wagons, though, if you're Queens. You need all those roamers to start coming back. And Sealgram getting a kill indicates that perhaps that's going to happen. Now a 4v2. Have they managed to salvage this? It looks like they have. Steven, oh, the worst possible time to reload. They got the kill in. Now you just need to get the defuse. Steven is still hunting for kills there. Had to shut down at the end, Binks. He was still on edge. You, you never know. I think we've learned this match that you can't even trust your teammates sometimes, Corvick. So you got to keep that guard up. You don't know who's who wants to steal a defuse for their stats. So, regardless. Who's sussy? I believe is what the kids say. <laughs> oh, man. I don't get it. One down, three to go for Queens. 
But let's not forget, it's not like they're on the attacking side where they can be going against the same side after the same side after the same site. No, they got to complete a perfect rotation and then some, which means we are going to be seeing Attackers them rotate and, and go over to the cash and CC site. They will be taking the Vigil of Munchy. Interesting, to say the least, because yes, you can throw the impact from down below, but I think in this scenario, there's a better operator to take. A zombie in this case could be a good one. But I can't judge it until I see how effective the roam game with Vigil is. So regardless, keynotes for this round, Corbeck. Trick, roam, angles. And that's all this round is going to come down to. Well, it's a bold choice here to return to this bomb site, considering that it has not favored Queens in the slightest. I, I know that you're in desperate straits, right? But you would really consider, I think, going over to Jim Bedroom and trying to fight it out over there. Now, they've made some changes. So he's still on the bandit, but you have Munchie now on the Vigil, a very hard, dedicated roamer. You're bringing along a castle as well, which is going to theoretically slow down the pace of play in a number of different locations. I think these are good choices that they've made. I just worry it's too little too late. And as that bandit battery comes down, uh, this is going to be the first real test. If Zuki can stave him off on this wall, I think they're in good shape for the rest of this round. If Zuki is defeated again in this sort of shell game, that's probably it for Queens tonight. Bomb located by attackers. Quick dispersion of the castle barricade will now be met with a Aruni barricade, then an ADS. Great use of denial on the side of Queens. They have clearly accounted for it, but have they accounted for the Twitch drone? It will sneak right on in. There's one. There's the new EMP device. Nothing they can do. Not again! Get away! Thank you! But they will still be caught out by the Ash who has pushed in from, I believe, either garage door or even from the barricade. Very unfortunate position from Queens. will put them at a disadvantage as Aruni, or sorry, we are going to have the Ayana pushing in from upstairs. Jaeger also spotting out. This is a plethora of information for the players of UTD Green to work off of. Gridlock Charge will be thrown into sight, trying to hinder all the movement of Queens. Spongebob making their way up in towards Garage because there is currently no coverage in that area. Vigil also making their way back towards sight. We'll spot out the Twitch drone dispersed a bit rather quickly. 126, two smoke grenades. There's the Ash getting caught off guard, but they're not ready for the double swing that comes from the Thermite of the Kill of Fiend pushing to sight. They're now going to be going for the Case D Fuse. Looking to be successful. One second to go. Not able to catch the window. Down to a 1v4. Plant has gone down. All left up to Steven. 2-3-3-3 three, 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 three to find four kills to keep Queens in it. They'll be able to find one. Go for the quick reload with the UMP. Looking for it. Slow rate of fire. They have the pings that they may need. Swing and try to find the angle. They're not ready to contest both of them. Window angle. Able to find one. Spots out the other player. Not accounting for red stairs. Text horn on the Twitch to use the F2 and find it. And that's UTD Greed win out the match. Well, there you have it, UTD Green, putting up a great performance there against Queens. And I'll be honest with you, Banks, I mean, it wasn't a particularly innovative attack strategy they had right there. It was uh, the same traits that had really been serving them throughout this entire match. Good coordination, uh, good gunplay, right? Great gun skill across the board, good follow-up, good trade, and good communication. I mean, those are the essentials that UTD built this win on tonight for Queens rough night you hate to start your season off this way somebody's got to lose unfortunately and hopefully this is a good learning experience for them that they can build back up off of yeah there's a lot to digest within this vod and i yeah. believe that there's a lot to be learned there's so many positives that i saw in adaptations that we saw from both teams throughout this game and there's no denying corbeck that even we saw even though we saw early blunders from queens in many of those rounds their ability to overcome those massive mountains that then stood in their place after they weren't able to overcome. That's exactly what they showed. They showed us that they have the capability to make something out of nothing and they have the ability to play the angles. And it's just about making that a little bit more consistent. Indeed. Yeah. And, you know, it, again, it's rough, but but Queens, you know, it's early on plenty of time to bounce back. Take what you can from this. Look at the things that their opponents were doing and adapt. If you're UTD, you know, there are a couple little tricks, I think, here and there that would have benefited them. A couple of rounds that they probably could have won easier or won at all. And they'll pick that up. And I think they could be quite a serious team here in this champions level of play. Definitely could. We are going to be kicking it to a quick break. We'll be back in a few moments with an interview.
Uh, no, actually, just we being are informed not? by the producer, I, I don't think we'll be doing an interview here tonight. We may be looking at them in the future, but here on week number one, it's getting kind of late for these players anyway. We're going to let them go to their well-deserved rest, and we're going to wrap it up for the day. So uh, for Binks and I and for all the NECC staff, thank you so much for joining us this evening. We look forward to being back next week with more Rainbow Six Siege action. Meanwhile, check the NECC Twitter, check the NECC Discord, and see the other fun and exciting gaming events they have coming up here in Collegiate this week. There is much more to play it's only tuesday and there's tons of stuff booked in but for now from all of us here good night and thank you for watching